one of the most successful franchises of all time. A postmodern cinematic a masterpiece. A clever play on traditional storytelling. I'm talking of course about Shrek <laughs> and everything that followed. When my friend suggested I did this video, I was like, you're goddamn right. Maybe Shrek isn't the first thing that comes to your mind when you think period drama, but from now on it will be and it's my doing. Now you know me, I like to come prepared. That is why I chose to re-watch every single movie and all of the shorts that were ever released. I watched Shrek the Holes, I watched The Three Diablos, I watched Far Far Away Idol, I watched Shrek for the The Ghost of Lord Farquaad. I've seen it all. I've seen things that nobody should be forced to see. Just so you get the most thorough review. I only left out the Puss in Boots series because it's six seasons, come on. And feline fashion is, I feel like, practically a different category. So I'm just leaving this out, but the rest is all there, baby. Also, did you know that Shrek was already being developed in the 90s and it looked like this? I just ruined your life. Anyway, we're gonna go chronologically, <laughs> starting off with the OG, the man, the myth, the legend, Shrek. Uh, there is no specific timeline given for the movies, but we have a little medieval influence going on. I'll date the first movies at least around 14th century based on a few things, which I shall discuss later. Let's go with Shrek's iconic fit first. First off, tight fitted pants he's wearing could actually be hose, as in, I know it sounds bad. Even though 15th century hose usually be plain, uh, Shrek's hose is plaid, which I'm assuming is a nod to his supposedly Scottish accent, which is so bad. I always watched it with like Polish dubbing. Then we have a shirt, which looks like it's made either of very thick linen or maybe like thin wool, which are both period appropriate fabrics, let me tell you that. Though wool probably wouldn't be used as a shirt that's like closest to the skin, but because Shrek is probably quite thick skinned, I don't think he minds a little scratchy shirt. A leather belt below the waist makes a lot of sense and it would have been worn in the period. Shoes also look like a regular pair of late medieval leather shoes. Probably the most baffling element of Shrek's outfit is that weird leather vest that he's wearing because like why? Why is it that short? Was it worn by a human before? Like what is going on? What's the story? <laughs> According to Reddit, Shrek is a shredded chad so he wears small sizes to show off his body and muscles like Chris Evans or Henry Cavill. So basically Shrek is a um, prototype for a lot of these guys. My theory though is that it may have been a human doublet or a jerkin. I mean made for a human, not made from human. Next up we have Fiona's iconic dress, which if we're sticking to 15th century terminology is basically a velvet kirtle. The fit is a bit off and the decoration is maybe not an orthodox way of embellishment in the 1400s, but overall fits the vibe. Lord Farquaad is your typical 15th century Chad, and I feel like several Renaissance portraits were used as an inspiration, especially the Duke of Urbino, and just various Renaissance fashion styles from modern day Italy. His hair screams 15th century, that is a 15th century hairstyle. His hat screams 15th century. Definitely in terms of historical fashion, this is one of the best fit in the movie, if not in the whole series. <laughs> the first Shrek movie also has properly medieval slash renaissance side characters, like the lady who tried to sell the donkey, or the peasants, or the tournament audience. Monsieur Hood is also in line with the traditional portrayal of Robin Hood, which stems from the 14th and 15th century as a story. And to finish it off, the wolf <laughs> is wearing a Victorian slash Edwardian inspired nightgown with a cap. Overall, because I have seen it all in quite a short time span, I have to say because of all the historical references, the first Shrek movie deserves like a solid A tier. Why does it sound like A tier? Shrek 2. Let's start off with Fiona's post-wedding dress, which is different than what she wore to the actual wedding in the first movie. Again, we have that curl situation going on with a nice embroidered hem. Overall, I feel like women's fashions are way behind men's fashions in the early days of the Shrek franchise. But then Fiona has a nice Italian Renaissance inspired hairstyle, so there is that. We see the same tendency with Fiona's parents, where the king is dressed in a mix of 
later centuries with some 16th century and even 18th century influences while the queen wears a medieval inspired dress paired with an early 1980s updo which I mean whatever makes her happy I guess <laughs> fairy godmother's dress just ain't doing it for me I'll be I'll be honest with you it screams spirit Halloween it's giving wish it's it's giving a six-year-old walking up to his mom at 9 p.m. saying they need a costume for tomorrow Fiona's gold brocade dress on the other hand might as well be a coronation robe and also oh my god is the trim made of snakes or am I tripping because it would be such a nice touch Prince Charming's blue fit has the same vibe as the fairy godmother's dress which I guess makes sense since he's under her influence so much why is he kind of Moving on, the fast food workers fit is so cute. I love it. It's such a clever play on a historical this modern. There is a 15th century style coif. There is a curl. 10 out of 10. Doris makeup is 1930s realness and I'm living for it. Puss in Boots fit is clearly inspired by the three musketeers which are set in the 17th century and the rest is his fur. <laughs> Love these girlies hairstyles and I'll be honest I miss this animation style in the Shrek franchise like the new Puss in Boots just looks so Pixar This little wig right here is probably the first time in a Shrek movie when something resembling 18th century is featured And I've noticed it's a recurring theme when they want to show off how posh or rich or out of touch a character is They just make him wear a white wig, <laughs> which I mean fair Shrek's new fit is in my opinion such a downgrade it just looks silly. But I just noticed that interestingly enough, Prince Charming is doing a Shrek cosplay, trying to convince Fiona he's Shrek. Like the shirt, the brown vest, the, the plaid hose, the belt, it's all there. I didn't notice that before. I am not a fan of this reporter's weird satin gown. And I will say this, peasants in Shrek 2 are genuinely cool. <laughs> Like there is a variety of heavily historically inspired headgear. There is curls, there is hose, there... some of the elements are such a nice touch. Fairy Godmother's red dress though, absolutely iconic. Nothing to do with Renaissance, uh, everything to do with slaying to the max. Fiona's wedding dress, which is at this point her third wedding dress, is basically what I wished Camilla's gown looked like during the coronation, not gonna lie. At least the fit. Prince Charming's doublet or tunic has a really nice particular theme going on, so I think this is when he finally leans into properly historical inspiration. Also, I low-key love the Queen's wedding guest gown. The pattern just works and her little hairnet just adds to it. So, summing up, Shrek 2 still has a lot of good moments, uh, but overall a lot of the fashions are just generic costumes, so I'm gonna probably put it in the C tier. Shrek the third starts off with a historical transformation, so there's a lot to unpack here. Uh, let's start off with this little dude who gives off 30s just 17th century, followed by these spectacular 16th slash 17th century style fits, which are honestly so good. The little ruffs on Shrek's cuffs are honestly chef's kiss and Fiona's whole fit, maybe with the hair a little toned down because this is ridiculous, but these will definitely work on like a Spanish court in mid 17th century. Shrek's shoes are just delicious, like check out those high heels. Apart from the hair and the shoes, his fit is more in line with like 16th century fashion and then we see everyone else still dressed in the 15th century garb which is interesting because it looks like this timeline was actually thought through. Now I don't remember her, I think it was the evil queen but there's definitely a 16th century Lucas Cranach moment going on here with the color. Let's talk about 15th century cheerleaders though, like the Henin shaped headpieces, chainmail uniforms, this is so cool. The school uniforms also have a nice 16th century curl decor going on. Uh, Arthur's fit is just annoying but it could be my aversion to the character um, just getting better of me. Okay let's talk princesses. I I do love the queen's gown here. It looks like it took her husband turning into a frog and passing away for her to start actually dressing well. No shade here. This is just so much more regal and like better fitted than what we got before. A slight 16th century influence here and in Cinderella's dress. Then we have some raised waistline moment on Sleeping Beauty and we have 15th century
complimentary style on Rapunzel. Look at that neckline, so good. Snow White's outfit is probably the most generic and like I don't even know what era that's supposed to be. I love the texture of Fiona's dress here. I feel like Shrek the third. This is the movie where we finally get patterns and luscious brocades that we deserve from day one, but they were probably too difficult to animate. Similarly with Prince Charming, we finally have something interesting going on in his outfits. So generally a lot of good looks in this one, which is why I think it's fair to put it in tier A, even though it's actually my least favorite of the movies probably. Shrek Forever After. So let's start off with this bunch of peasants, which still stick to the Renaissance styling, but I would say are a little historically glowed down compared to Shrek 1. Like same with guests at the party. Fiona's dress is very much still in line with what she's been wearing always. I want to talk about this little guy because I feel like it's such an iconic character and it deserves a little breakdown, like what is going on? There is some Tudor elements to his look, the Tudor flat cap or the doublet style jacket, but then he also has interesting footwear, which could be a play on the 17th century men's shoes. Rumpelstiltskin's initial fit is a very stereotypical take on in fashion <laughs> but when he becomes the ruler of the kingdom is when he actually gets a massive glow up like just check out this sweet 18th century fit fair the pants are more in line with renaissance fashion but overall it's a decent take on mid to late 18th century styles fiona's ogre fit is very vivian westwood <laughs> but that's about all in terms of historical references I can think of when I look at this. So in general some nice pieces but overall in terms of historical accuracy a glow down, a downgrade, a step back. I would put this one in C tier. Let's move on to Puss in Boots. Now naturally there aren't that many actual clothes in the movie so let's focus on the ones that are worn by humans. Starting off with Jack and Jill, uh, Jill's little jacket and the whole look is reminding me a lot of those Germany product style gowns, whereas Jack's fit is more in line with late 16th, early 17th century maybe, but overall probably the best dressed people in the movie. Let's also talk about Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> What am I doing? Imagine if this was like a clickbaity video and the title would be like, we have to talk about Humpty Dumpty. His little fit though is clearly inspired by the traditional clothes of Spanish matadors, which in turn is a fashion that draws from 17th century Andalusian clothes. These soldiers also sort of look 17th century inspired to me, so it seems like the overall theme the movie is going for is 17th century, like in terms of fashions. So overall, not that many historical inspirations, but when they're there, they look surprisingly not too bad. So I'm gonna put this B tier, but it's probably mostly because of Jack and Jill. <laughs> Because the whole animation style got quite pixarized in Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, in terms of historical styles, it's a massive downgrade. <laughs> like they went for a more cartoonish style, which in turn means less history and more random fun, which is not a bad thing. It's just we're not reviewing fun in this video. So we see some loose 17th and 18th century inspiration on the peasants here, but it looks like modern costumes pretty much. Like it looks like they rented. Like what is this? What is this supposed to be? <laughs> a nice historical touch is Goldilocks wearing something between a corset and a pair of stays, but moments like these guys, Ariana, what are you doing here? Like. What is this? And especially when you remember things like how clever the fast food workers outfit was in Shrek 2 and then you look at this. No, I'm sorry. That's that's a historical glow down right here. We do get a little redemption with Jack Horner's fit, which is very much 19th century inspired. We have the high collar, we have a waistcoat, we have a double-breasted coat. The pink hair probably would not exist in 19th century on a man, but uh, maybe he just likes it, I don't know. A lot of male background characters are also wearing 19th century style jackets, while female background characters are wearing, well, clothes. So overall, in terms of historical costumes, this one has got to be the worst so far. This one's going to be E tier purely because of Jack Horner. It actually probably deserves F. 
Now, because I did suffer through all the Shrek shorts available, let me quickly rank them before we wrap up. Ghost of Lord Farquaad's Scared Shrekless, Far Far Away Idol, Donkey's Christmas Shrektacular. They all get an F just because there is not a single new fit introduced. They're basing the outfits off of what was originally in the movie. So the three Diablos get a D because there isn't much to see there in terms of historical fashion. But those musketeer inspired outfits are just so cute. Shrek the Holes has Fiona's Regency inspired nightgown and this absolutely spectacular winter fit, so that's at least a C. And there is a vintage style fit in the pig who called werewolf, but it's a little lame, so that's an E tier for me. Looks like this is all. I think I've suffered enough. I have watched so much Shrek content recently, I keep bringing it up in conversation and it's not a good look. So let's end it here so I can forget <laughs> all of the knowledge that I have gained over the past couple of weeks. I'm trying to come up with like a Shrek related pun, but I cannot. So if you could drop that in the comments, that would be fantastic. Bye!